Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. So today we will learn on chapter 2 which is about cellular respirations. So based on our lesson plan, today we will learn about the structure and the significance of ATP and also we're going to look at the cellular respiration as an oxidation and also reduction process. So first, what is cellular respiration? Cellular respiration is a catabolic pathway of aerobic and aerobic respirations. So later, you will learn about aerobic respiration including glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and also electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. And anaerobic respiration involving glycolysis, lactic acid fermentation, and also alcohol fermentation, in which this catabolic pathway of cellular respiration break down the organic molecules for the productions of ATP. In terms of cellular respiration, the organic molecules is referred to the glucose. So what is ATP? ATP is used by the cell of the living organism to perform all energy consuming activities. So all activities that need energy will involve ATP. So what is catabolic pathway? Before we look at the catabolic pathway, we're going to look first what does it mean by metabolism. So all chemical reactions inside the organism is known as a metabolism. So metabolism divided into two, we have anabolism or known as anabolic pathway and the second one is catabolism, also, no, also known as catabolic pathway. So anabolic pathway or anabolism is a metabolic pathway or metabolism that consume energy to synthesize or to build a complex molecule from simple compound. Meanwhile, for catabolic pathway, is the metabolism that release energy by breaking down a complex molecules to simpler compounds. In terms of cellular respiration, the complex molecules is referred to the glucose and the simpler compounds is referred to the carbon dioxide and also water and it releases energy inside the ATP and also in the form of heat. So what is ATP or adenosine triphosphate? ATP is a high energy molecule that store and transport energy. Meaning to say ATP is not energy but ATP contain energy. So ATP is the cell energy shuttles. It is a nucleotide. Why it is known as nucleotide? Because it consists of sugar, phosphate, and also nitrogenous base. With unstable phosphate bond that the cell hydrolyzes for energy. I will explain about this one later. And ATP also known as energy carrier or universal energy carrier. So ATP powers the cellular work by coupling hexagonic reactions to endagonic reactions. And when the ATP is hydrolyzed, we will release the energy of the ATP. So here is the inside structure or the chemical structure of ATP. First, it contains nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous base here is only adenine. Remember, only adenine. It does not involve um, cytosine. It does not involve guanine and also... Uh, another one timing okay and the carbon sugar here is referred to the ribose not the oxid the oxyribose why this is a known as a ribose sugar because it has um, oxygen here in carbon number two carbon number one carbon number two carbon number three four and five and then it also contains three phosphate group here one two three that attach to the carbon number five of the carbon sugar or of the ribose sugar so here 
is the simple structures of the ATP. You have adenine base, the ribose sugar, and also 3-phosphate group. So, how do we get energy from ATP? We will get the energy from ATP by breaking the high energy bond between the last two phosphate. How we break the bonds? Through hydrolysis process or additions of what? Additions of water. So, how does it work? The bond between the phosphate group of ATP can be broken by hydrolysis forming ADP and also phosphate or known as adenosine diphosphate. So here, look at here, we have three phosphate group and when you add water, the water will cause the breakdown of the bond between phosphate number phosphate group number two and also phosphate group number three thus this uh, breakdowns of the bond will release energy as you can see here and the release of energy is known as the exergonic reactions in which it will produce 7.6 kilocalorie of energy per mole of ATP hydrolyze so you can see here more more clear ATP you add water it will break the bond between the last two phosphate and it release energy 7.6 kilo kilojoule and then so this is the ATP cycle ATP to become adenosine phosphate uh, adenosine phosphate the name of the reactions is hydrolysis and then you want to add ADP plus phosphate it is known as phosphorylation uh, phosphorylation process so there are three types of phosphorylation process or addition of phosphate first we have substrate level phosphorylation next we have oxidative phosphorylation and the third one is photophosphorylation so what is substrate level phosphorylation substrate level phosphorylation is the process in which we transfer the phosphate group from a substrate directly to ADP thus the enzyme will release two products the first product is the substrate without the phosphate group and the second product is ATP itself next um, we can produce the ATP by oxidative phosphorylations so the food is oxidized and the energy is extracted from the electron this is the energy that elect, uh, extracted from the electron and then this energy is then used to make ATP in the process of chemiosmosis so how does it occur once the electron here pass through this pump, it will cause the release of the hydrogen ion at the outside. And then the hydrogen, the high concentration of hydrogen ion will go back to the part with, with low concentration of hydrogen ion and it will activate this phosphate uh, sorry this enzyme so this and once this enzyme become activate it will cause it will transfer the energy inside the iron to adp and phosphate meaning to say adp consume energy consume energy and cause the addition of the phosphate to the adp thus it will produce adenosine triphosphate Next is photophosphorylation in which the addition of phosphate group to ADP with the help of energy from the sunlight or known as a photo. So light energy used to generate electron and then the energy is extracted from the electron by an electron transport change. This is known as the chemiosmosis. This one 
quite similar with oxidative phosphorylation, which is it involving electron transport change over here, over here, as you can see. However, they use energy from sunlight to excite the electron. And this process letter you will learn on chapter 3, which is uh, on the topic of photosynthesis. Therefore, three ways to produce ADP, ATP, first substrate level phosphorylation, second oxidative phosphorylation, and the third one is photophosphorylation. Okay? So what is the functions of ATP or the significance of ATP or the importance of ATP? First is for movement and then it also important for anabolic process and then for secretions and also active transport. So energy for movement, energy is required for the movement of cilia and also flagella, our muscle contraction for you to move, for you to run, for you to eat or drink, and then the movement of chromosome during cell division. Next, um, the ATP also is important for anabolic uh, process. Remember, anabolic process or anabolic pathway is a metabolism that consume energy, meaning to say they need ATP to synthesize complex molecule from simple molecule. molecule. Okay. Uh, another function of ATP is for secretion in which inside the cell, the packing and the transport of secretory product require energy. And then next, as you know, it also important for active transport in which energy is required to move substance such as iron because the iron cannot cross directly through the plasma membrane, right? So they must cross the plasma membrane using the um, transport protein over here. However, the movement against the concentration gradient meaning to say it moved from high concentration region to low concentration eh, sorry it moved from high, low concentration region to high concentration regions okay against the concentration uh, gradient okay so last but not least cellular respiration as an oxidation reduction process or it also known as redox process. So what is oxidation and reduction process? It is a chemical reaction involving the transfer of electron from one reactant to another. So we're going to look at oxidation and reduction. So what does it mean by oxidation? Oxidation is loss of electron. Reduction is additions of electron. So as you can see here, Zinc will donate its electron to other molecules. Here it will become zinc 2 plus. Okay, meaning to say 2 plus means it donate two electron to the other molecules. Ingat orang yang membeli membeli adalah orang yang positif, and then orang yang menerima adalah orang yang or in your negative, I mean, that, that does not apply in your life. Lah. So, so, the reduction is the additions of electron, meaning to say, chlorine, it accepts the electron from other molecules and it will become uh, chloride here. As you can see, uh, uh, Cl negative, meaning to say, it accepts one electron from another molecule. So, the one that donate the electron or undergo oxidation process is known as reducing sugar. Meanwhile, the one that accept the electron in the process of reduction, it is known as oxidizing agent. So, here is the picture that you so that you can understand more. Uh, look at the orange ball here. This is the reducing agent in which it 
will donate the electron to the other compound. Once it's donate electron, it known as oxidation process. And this one, the green ball here, is the one that will accept the electron. It will undergo the process of reduction. The one that accept the electron is known as oxidizing a agent. So does cellular respiration also undergo this process? The answer is yes. So as you can see here, the glucose, it will become oxidized. Means it undergo the process of oxidation because it lose, uh, it lose the um, electron, and therefore glucose is known as reducing agent. Meanwhile, for oxygen over here, oxygen will accept the electron. As you can see here, it gain hydrogen. Okay, it gain hydrogen. So meaning to say, it undergo the process of reduction. Therefore, oxygen is known as oxidizing a agent. Okay? So remember, it involves the transfer of hydrogen atom where electron will be moved with proton, hydrogen, or ion. So to be easy, if you see the structure over here lost the electron meaning to say meaning to say uh, sorry if the structure here lost uh, hydrogen means to say they also lost the electron if the structure or the molecule have the additions of hydrogen meaning to say they accept the electron from other molecules so i think that's all for today thank you class